Take the Leap is the podcast where we get real about the roller coaster that is entrepreneurship and life. Sure, some folks make running a business look like a walk in the park, but let's be honest, it's more like a wild ride through a theme park with a lot of unexpected twists and turns. Join us, your co-hosts, Ashlyn and Tori, as we spill the beans on our own real life experiences and shine a spotlight on some amazing guests. From the highs of success stories to the lows of exit failures. And hey, we'll even throw in some cringe-worthy, laugh-out-loud, embarrassing moments for good measure. So buckle up and tune in every Tuesday and Thursday for a dose of raw, unfiltered truth about what it's really like to chase your dreams and build a business. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just dipping your toes into the startup world, we've got something for everyone. Even if it's just to make you think, wow, I'm glad I didn't do what they did. Welcome back to the Take the Leap podcast. We are so excited uh, to have a conversation today with our guest, Mary Williams. Mary is the CEO and founder of Sensible Woo, home of the School of Moxie podcast, a librarian by trade who established herself in the entertainment industry as the digital archivist for a major animation production studio. She has consulted for not only entertainment companies, but also marketing agencies, tech startups, and nonprofit fundraising organizations. For the last eight years, she's been a business coach for highly sensitive neurodivergent business owners, championing championing the focus on systems and data management as a solid foundation for sustainable businesses that scale. The model at Sensible Woo is that you are always your best system, which means embracing the magic of your intuitive side is just as important as the data your business produces. Mary has been an online creator since 2010, which makes her a tough old bird in the online entrepreneurship community. And you should definitely ask her about all the crazy shit she's been up to over the years, as I do all the time. (laughs) You can travel with Mary as she records guests in studios through her weekly emails, YouTube, Instagram, and threads. So welcome, Mary. Thank you for being on the Take the Leap podcast with us. Hello, hello. So excited. So excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Congratulations on launching. It's so exciting. Yay. Thank you. I'm super honored. When you guys reached out, I was like, oh, thanks. Like, that's a lot of trust to ask someone to come in and be a guest. Yes. A lot. Well, we, we kind of stalk you and your weekly newsletters. Um, <laughs> I watch your extended readings religiously. Though I have to admit, I don't always watch them at the beginning of the week. I often watch them at the very end, although it just depends on the weekend. I've discovered <laughs> that with people too. Um, and mm. and it's been kind of like coming in when I've been channeling because I really like try to tap into our, the energy of our, our subscriber group. <laughs> and it's been feeling more and more like the, the, the spectrum of time that people consume them is getting wider and wider. And so like, as I channel, like it literally feels like it gets wider and wider. So I start ending in all these things. Like if you get it now, or if you get it later, like it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really that. wild how the information comes in after having done mm-hmm. readings for so many years now. Um, it's it, that that's been a very cool thing to see. Yeah. Yeah. Before I bought into the paid newsletter, I was always like experiencing like lots of FOMO when I like, just watched the general reading on Saturday and I'm like, uh-huh. I want the rest of it. So I've stopped watching it on Saturdays and being like, this is my Sunday morning. Welcome to the next week that is starting. So it's you're not the only one. That. You're not the only one. Yeah. There's more than one person who's told me they're like, my Sunday morning ritual is. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. very I nice. I love that. I love that. It is very helpful. Well, Well, part of the reason we invited to you here today is that we want to hear what is your take the leap story? Like, I feel like it's, I'm going to try not to tell like a gone with the wind level story. (laughs) I don't think we want to be here for four hours. Um, So I had a corporate career, like a lot of people did. And um, like my, my bio says, <laughs> I've been a creator since 2010 and I was a blogger back in the day. So I was working for Disney in animation. I was their digital archivist and um, I fell in love with sewing and I would sew my own clothes 
And at the time, the blogging world was really taking off. Well, I mean, a big part of it had already taken off, honestly. And there were a lot of sewing bloggers, and I stumbled upon them because I was looking up information on the internet, <laughs> trying to figure out how to do the same or that same or what the heck does this mean? I don't know how to do that. And there were some people who were very well established before me. And I looked at it and I thought, you guys are totally like, this is your job. And I hated going to an office. Like I hated driving to work every day. I do not belong in an office ever. <laughs> and I, I was just always seeking like, how do I find something where I don't have to go into an office? And I noticed that these people were definitely entrepreneurs in their own right. And they were doing something that they loved and they were getting paid through sponsors and advertisers and they were selling some of their product. And um, I love to write and I was, I just, I love the format of it. So I started blogging and then lo and behold, my little blog grew legs and took off and I started earning like real side hustle money and I had sponsors and advertisers every month and I had quite the readership and every now and then some piece of content would go a little viral um, and, and you know, it was great <laughs> until I got really <laughs> burnt out by having to be this like content production, you know, slave. <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And I, I would be really tired and I started losing my creativity. I couldn't figure out what was I going to make next. And people were like, I need another dress. And I was like, I can't make another dress. <laughs> so um, about that time, I was starting to get questions from people like, how did you monetize it? How did you make the money? And that's what kind of got me into the business world. Um, and then very, I'll try to like shorten the professional stories, but I finally did go work in a library. I was the head of technology while they went through um, a huge renovation in Austin, Texas. And while I was there, my friends back from Los Angeles sure did miss me. <laughs> and they started asking, are you available or do you know somebody to help us with all these things? And uh, I left out into consulting and um, did that for a while. And then through just like the, you know, law of attraction small business owners were coming to me and I found that they were way more enjoyable than the big B2B contracts with the entertainment companies because the entertainment companies were notorious for not finishing their contracts and people there <laughs> come and they go and it's like a revolving door. And my yeah. entrepreneurs were just like in it to win it and they just wanted to finish the work. And they also wanted this intersection of like the woo-woo with the very practical and so they would usually start by booking readings with me because I'd been doing readings this entire time, you know, nights and weekends. And they would ask about their businesses and their readings, but they would ask about things like how to integrate their software for their launch. And I'm like, this is not a tarot question. <laughs> like, why are you asking me this question? And, and, um, and so I actually, I, I, I was really reflecting on this question before we recorded because you guys sent them to me. And I was thinking, like, I don't know that I really felt like I actually took the leap until I left consulting. There was something that was so just, like, usual, familiar in consulting mm -hmm. that it never really felt like I had actually left the corporate environment. But when I fully went into coaching, that was when I think I really felt like I took the leap. And, um, you know, now, now I can't imagine – not doing it because mm -hmm. like there's no way you can get me back into a corporate environment <laughs> there's just no way i won't do it yeah oh uh, i think ashlyn and i can very much relate to that yeah. uh i don't think there's enough money in the world to make us go back into an office every day no I, not unless I, the culture changes <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. but even then it, i don't want to be beholden to anybody <laughs> No, I mean, I, I hated the idea of I had to show up and be there for a prescribed amount of time when there would be days where like, I mean, I, I'm not afraid of working hard. I work really hard in my business and I love it. And there are times where you have long days and I'm like, great, I have a 10 hour day, a 12 hour day, not a problem. But if you're like, you have to sit here for eight hours and I'm like, but there was only two hours worth of productive work today. Why do I have to be here when I could be taking care of other things or taking care of myself? And I think the only thing I miss are I've, I've made a lot of really great friends over the years through office culture, and we're still friends mm -hmm. to this day. Um, 
the the friendships that I made, especially when I was at Disney, were have been everlasting. So, you know, I love my friends. I love watching movies when they come out and seeing their names roll across the screens in the credits, and I always cheer for them. So I love that. But mm-hmm. you know, people always say like, "Oh wow, you worked at Disney," and I'm like, "Yes, it was fun until it wasn't." But I just did not belong in an office. So it can mm-hmm. be Disney, and you can still be like, "I don't." Want to be here right now <laughs> you can still say that <laughs> such a good point that's such a good point you could literally have your dream job on paper and still not and it not be a good fit yeah there there are a lot of people who still ask me to this day especially from my old grad grad program um where i got my degree for library science and and you know they'll say how do how do i get what the job that you had and I'm like, well, there's really no clear path to that either because it was kind of made for me by me. And then I left and it doesn't exist anymore. And there are other people doing something similar, but it's like different titles, different things. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, there's just, there's, it just points out that there are no straight line paths to anything. anything. Yep. And you mm-hmm. see it all the time in our entrepreneurial world, which is, I think is why we love this question of like, what made you take the leap? Because mm-hmm. everybody has a different story. I know that a lot of people get laid off and that's how they end up doing it. But, um, you know, I just finally was like, I just can't do a commute anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the scariness, the pain of the scariness of, of being on my own is better than having to sit in a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The trade-offs. Yeah. Yeah. My commute That's is awesome. walking from my bedroom into this office. That's, you know, <laughs> like a 20-step walk. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. And I, and I always I had this dream. I always, I just wanted to work at home every day with my cat, Mr. Giles. Mm-hmm. I just want, and I thought, you know, this sounds so silly, but it's, it's a big happiness factor for me. But I think more than anything, like it just, has really pointed out how much I just wanted peace and quiet during my day. And I find offices to be very noisy. I get interrupted all the time and I really enjoy uninterrupted time. So over the years, you know, I had, you know, amassed enough seniority in various positions where I could get work from home time because that wasn't very common. And whenever I worked from home, I always got 10 times the amount of work done in half the amount of office time. And mm-hmm. I would just, and I was always happier and my stress was less. And I just have realized that I just need my stress to be less. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's fair. That's fair. Just, Especially if you're doing anything creative or problem solving, which I guess most entrepreneurs now are. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you need that space um, to not be stressed out all the time. Because it's yeah. just really hard to think and to make things happen. Like yeah. Awesome. Well, what is something, now that you are where you're at now, what is something that you would tell younger Mary when you first started blogging or you first took the leap? What would you tell her now? Um, I, You know, I think I would tell her leave space in your thought process and in your visioning process for all the things you don't know that you don't know that also newsflash nobody else knows because the world is going to change no matter what. (laughs) And what you think is the path to freedom now (laughs) is going to change. It's going to look so different because there's going to be the ways that we work, the ways that we make money, they grow and they, I feel like they're growing faster and faster now. So like when I was a blogger, YouTube, there were people who were YouTubing, but it required a lot of capital. It was technically way harder to do than it is now. And, um, and the barrier to entry was a lot harder. It was a lot higher. And um, the one thing that that time period had going for it was that paid traffic really wasn't a major thing. Like Mm -hmm. if you did advertising, you were probably working with like an actual advertising firm and they were doing much more complicated things than we can do now where you have like meta business suite and you can go up and go in there and like fire up some $3 a day ads. Like you couldn't do that back then. And um, now, now that like I just recorded YouTube videos earlier this week on my phone, you know, Mm -hmm. and um when I started blogging, I 
think I had my first iPhone by then. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and I sound like such an old fart when I think about it. <laughs> if it was twenty, if it was twenty ten, we we had iPhones by then because I think, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think I got my, because yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember um, Steve Jobs was, yeah, Steve Jobs was still alive and he was on the board at Disney. And I remember they gave me a BlackBerry in my first position in the internet group, which doesn't exist anymore. And um, they gave me a BlackBerry, and then in. I think it was fall of 07 or spring of 08, they released the iPhone and you had to be a director or hired to get an iPhone and then they were going to roll them out on down. And and I still have my very first iPhone because I'm one of those people who keeps your stuff. And I was like, maybe I should, yeah. I, I, think, I think I might end up selling it. I don't know. <laughs> For like nostalgia. It might be worth now. a lot yeah. now. Yeah, I was going to say, somebody might want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, but yeah, I, I think like who we were before, what we've done in the past. Um, I think like if you think about yourself today and you think about what's coming up ahead of you, um, I don't know that I, I don't know that you can even comprehend what will change and what will happen. Like I see changes dawning on the media landscape, which I find really fascinating and exciting. But I'm like, I have no idea what that means. Like creators are gaining more and more power. Indie creators are. And um, I think it's just a matter of time before the larger studios start creating more slices of pie for indie creators because they need those creators to retain the audiences that they're losing with their mainstream content. And um, like, what does that mean for us? I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. no idea <laughs> yeah. find out it's a journey yeah it's yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. oh that's so interesting that you talk about like the mainstream versus like the indie creators because yeah there's some stuff that I'll like watch that I'll be like yeah I'm turning this off this is total crap you know <laughs> like it's a little bit of brain rot <laughs> and the more authentic yeah. like indie folks are the better ones to take a look at <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think that there, the because the barrier to entry is so low, now there's such a volume of stuff that it's really easy to put something out. So you have to kind of wade through the mediocre stuff. But the really good stuff pops. Like it really, really pops mm -hmm. these days. Um, and, the, and, and I see indie creators banding together and doing really interesting collaborations where, you know, I think that I think that there's going to be some disruption to the existing system. Um, you know, we've been watching it kind of break apart more and more ever since I left the entertainment industry. It certainly has been. Um, but we're watching like, okay, so we're like recording a podcast right now. So in the podcast landscape, you've got these studios and, you know, indie creators are like, hey, what about us? Like you can't just force us aside like indie creators make up the majority of the creator part of that economy and and yeah there's there's some really inconsistent creation out there and there's also some really like bad quality too but but the the celebrities that have entered the space it's sort of like they're on their own planet in a way and um i'm curious to see what the indie market does mm -hmm. to be honest with you I think feel like every celebrity at this point has a podcast. Yes. And has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially since the actor and writer strikes right. that we yeah. had in the summer of 2023. I, I, I think they, I mean, when you think about talent, they are, this is like weirdo facts that I carry around in my head. Like they, so they are incorporated. <laughs> they have their own um, corporation entity and that's how they get paid. So the studios will actually pay their business and then they get payroll from their business and they have teams that work for them. Everything from like their stylist to their agent manager, all of that. And so they're paying salaries through their corporate entity to people. And, um, and, and when you think about this walking individual and you think like, oh, that's this famous person, this actor, you think of them and it's like, no, that's a business on two legs. And mm -hmm. they lost major revenue streams <laughs> in 2023 for a big period of time. And it's kind of like us as coaches seeing a disruption in the coaching industry right now where 
you know, we're like, oh, wow, people aren't <laughs> buying through the usual things. They don't want offers like this, this, and this right now. And I'm seeing a lot of, especially high ticket offers are just bottoming out right now. And it's the same thing. It's like going through an actor strike. What are you going to do? You're going to fire up another revenue stream and you're going to go for something that you can do. And the actors mm -hmm. went for something that really makes sense. Audio is definitely a place that they haven't played in very much. So it'd be a very smart thing to do if you were an actor. Mm -hmm. All right. Last question before we put you in the hot seat. <laughs> What's your why? Why do you do the things that you do? <laughs> oh my goodness. So many reasons why. Um, you know, I, okay. So y'all know I do human design and I have been diving into my human design a lot in the last couple of years. And for me personally to learn more about myself too, not just to help mm -hmm. my clients, but, um, I am a manifester. I'm for, for my human design nerds, I'm a six, three emotional manifester. So there you go. And, <laughs> and one of the big, big things for manifestors is working on creating a life where you preserve your peace. And I have found that my big why actually, I think is constantly in service of peace. Like I might joke that I just want to work from home with my cat all day. And yes, that is true. <laughs> but that, but that's part of the equation that brings me peace. And um, this year for 2023, I was telling you, Ashlyn, when you were here in town and we were having breakfast and um, <laughs> it just sort of like showed up on my door in January. I don't, I haven't picked a word of the year in forever. And this year, I realized that I do have a, a theme of the year and it is spaciousness. And I've discovered that spaciousness is giving me the, the flexibility to finally create more and more and more peace. And, um, you know, I went through some really hard years personally and professionally and my physical health has suffered. And you know, I've been working with a healer here. <laughs> like, I, there are so many changes that I've made in my life. And, you know, I'm re just really trying to make sure that my peace isn't disrupted by something like illness. Like the disruption from illness is awful. Um, peacefulness when it comes to the steadiness of revenue coming in the door. Um, getting it in the way that feels ethical and in alignment with me. So, mm -hmm. so I, I really feel like my, that has truly been my big why. Um, I know that when I'm at peace, I have a better impact on other people, but if I'm in fight or flight, like it's not going to happen. That's so lovely. Mm -hmm. It's such a, it's such a way that I'd love to live. <laughs> and I think why a lot of people <laughs> go into working for themselves, like, Yes. It's just we all live one life, right? Like, or in theory, we have one life and let's make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think that COVID showed, uh, well, I mean, I would hope that it showed everybody. I think most people really picked up on it in varying degrees, but mm -hmm. there were just a lot of ways that we were living life that were not working. And I, and I think right now, some of the discomfort we're having in the world is just as a result of those systems still not having been re-engineered so that we can have more personal peace, you know, like mm -hmm. you're seeing that struggle with people who do have jobs where they are being asked to go back into the office and they're like, why he don't want to, you know, yeah. and, and a lot mm -hmm. of times they're really willing to be on sort of this on call hybrid sort of fashion, but there are some companies and some systems out there that really want people to, be there for the sake of FaceTime. Butts and seats. Yep. Yeah, I don't think you're I, doing I just, work when I, you're not in front of me. Come on. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I actually find that to be like a super codependent pattern. I think that's where codependency shows up yeah. in the corporate oh, world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yes. Well, really managers point. don't manage if they don't have people to manage, right? Because if you think about all of the offices and all of the working environments where you felt like your manager did nothing and really their only job was to like yell at you, <laughs> yeah. you know, or like wander around the office and just be yeah. like, what are you doing right now? And I would be like, my work, go away. <laughs> like, don't bother me. Let me type my things out. But yeah, there were so many office jobs where I know folks who like watched YouTube during the day or they were like literally just waiting for a message to do the next step and not really being treated as like a creative you know, being, it's just like, you know, punch, you know, that a lot of, um, 
what are they called? Like the manufacturing line sort of things in yeah. corporate environments that are not supposed to mimic that at all. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it kind of goes back to your early question that you had also asked, Victoria, like, what would younger Mary think? <laughs> like, it's that whole, well, we don't know. Like, yeah. Ashlyn, you're totally right that like the existing corporate structure is so much based on this old Henry Ford Model T production line, you know, mm -hmm. formula of you show up, you clock in, you're there, and then you clock out. And the world is like, it changed a long time ago, but now we were forced to realize like, hey, it is completely different. And mm -hmm. those of us who've jumped into entrepreneurship totally demonstrated <laughs> during COVID, during the first shutdown, like, hey, there are people who are actually fully functioning right now and they're making bank. They're doing really, really mm -hmm. well. And um, in, in a, I wonder, I just wonder like how work is going to change. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised with me being in the coaching space. Like I wouldn't be surprised to find that a lot of my coaching isn't with the usual market of like independent business owners, but it starts to bleed over into more of this like established corporate entity type workforce. Maybe they start to evolve or at least we hope they start to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, well, I mean, Ashlyn, you and I had had a conversation. I don't know. This has been like couple, at least a few months ago now about B2B contracts and work and um, how that mm -hmm. space has been pretty hot, actually quite hot. Mm -hmm. And like, I, like I even have, I have a discovery call. We're meeting next week. Like it's just showing up on my doorstep. Like people are literally <laughs> asking me, they're like, Mary, can you help? And, and I find that pattern. I always look for patterns and I find that pattern really telling. I find it really telling. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we ready for some hot seat questions? Yeah. What is either and or the worst or best piece of unsolicited advice that you've received over the years? If you want to do both, you can do both. You just oh my goodness. I feel like I'm gonna make this rush of <laughs> <laughs> the best or worst. I have I've had both. Um okay, okay. I, I'm having this like very vivid memory right now of probably the worst piece of advice that came from a horrible working situation, which happened while I was in the beginning stages of blogging and like solidified in my heart that I was like, I got to get out of corporate. Um, but there was a, somebody who is a, a superior to me and she did not appreciate me in a meeting asking her clarifying questions. Um, cause she wanted what she wanted. And, um, then she um, <laughs> later told me that if I didn't do it her way, I was going to have no career there. And I just remember learning from other people in the office who had been there a long time before me that she had done this to them years prior and had indeed held back their careers and they stayed in those jobs. And I remember thinking, this is the best, worst piece of advice you have, you could have ever given me. You showed me exactly who you are. And you showed me exactly what happens to people here. And you also solidified for me why I don't belong in an office. <laughs> and Gosh. and I, I think sometimes the best, worst pieces of advice show up in those kinds of ways. They help us make decisions. Mm -hmm. I'll look mm -hmm. at me giving my thumbs up. on Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I stick up my thumb a lot because the thumbs up comes up every time on meetings. It's crazy now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's funny because like it seems – I'm like thinking aloud while I'm talking to you guys and like I'm thinking, oh, that was like the worst piece of advice ever. And I'm like, it was also the best advice. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You told you to what listen you to, to your know. gut. Yeah. Listen to that yeah. intuition <laughs> piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. And – um. I mean, I've had a lot of other really great pieces of, of advice that have come to me through various mentor type figures. Um, one of my very first bosses I ever had, he he treated me like an entrepreneur from the get go. 
and um, he he was like, the number one thing you need to do is network your buns off. He's like, I'll never stop you from networking. He's like, I want you to order a Rolodex, <laughs> keep it on your desk. <laughs> and I still have it. I still keep it. I still have it. And I still collect people's business cards just because, because I like it. And mm-hmm. um, and And that gave me a chance to really practice connection skills with people, which I think has paid off exponentially. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool, especially to have that so early in your Mm -hmm. career. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like a lot of those contacts because they were done the old fashioned way, (laughs) Um, (laughs) it, those contacts are like rock solid. Like I can go for literally a decade and not talk to them, reach out to them on LinkedIn be like, Hey, and they're like, what do you need? And, um, I That's think cool. as business owners, because things tend to move really, really fast. Sometimes we forget that, that cultivation of a relationship from like a real rooted place is, cannot be undervalued. Mm-hmm. And I see, yeah. and well, and I also meet far too many people in the online business space who clearly are looking for, do you have money? Are you going to pay me? What's your connection? Do they have money? Are they going to pay me? And I'm like, I can smell it. It, That whiff is so strong. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, ew, pew, (laughs) like gross, get out of my face. Like I don't want it. (laughs) Um, But, but I, I tend to be very wary because I, I know the difference with people who have really strong connection with me and people who don't. And the sad thing that I see with a lot of entrepreneurs is because we're told go out and network, but nobody's ever actually guided them in networking. They don't really know what they're looking for or what the networking is supposed to do. And, you know, the best networking has no end game ever. Mm -hmm. It's just this continuing Mm -hmm. relationship. Um, So, yeah, I, I think that was probably one of the like one of the best pieces of advice. Of advice. Yeah. Awesome. You already know that I do a lot of networking and I think that yeah, it's been very interesting as I do interactions. Um, I was on a, like speed networking recently and I connected with a bunch of people and, you know, I mean, I, I looked them up, I did my research, I knew we would be either good referral partners or like I could offer them something. And there was a guy who got really bent out of shape that I didn't know what he did, but I was just like, but bro, like, I'm not here to just like get you clients or like refer you business. Like I think we have like a reciprocal thing that we can have. Like I think, um, what was he? I'm not going to, I'm not going to say his name out loud, but he was one of those that does the, um, the digital business card things, which, you know, there's like a billion of them out there now. Like it's just, you know, like you're not, you don't have a new thing. So (laughs) don't pat yourself (laughs) on the back for that. Um, But, you know, that's one of the reasons I chose him as a marketer. I was like, you know, I can refer stuff to that. But yeah, he was just so like annoyed that I didn't know who he was. And I was like, well, bro, there were 140 people on that call. And I, you know, connected with about 30 of them. You know? <laughs> No, my brain doesn't work like that. Um, but another thing is I, I networked for a very long time before I started a business. And those solid yeah. relationships were what helped in the beginning to get those referrals and the word of mouth and like, you know, people in your court to celebrate you know, that you took the leap and are doing this now. So, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> That's a good point. I, like, I think it's so interesting because like Victoria, you and I are still pretty new connection. Um, mm-hmm. We'll get together soon because we're in the same area. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in Ashland, I think you, you and I met a while back now. Um, and, and I really feel like I was like listening to you talk right now and I'm like, I'm, I'm wondering if the reason why we formed such a good connection is because it's like, you know, when you see yourself and someone else and you're like, you do what I do, <laughs> you understand, I don't have to explain it to you. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think that, and we've referred people to each other and, and it's not just about, you know, oh, what are you going to do for me? It's, um, it, it's better than that, you know? And it, yeah, like the collaboration. It's a friendship. Yeah, it is. It, it is. On top it, of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And collaborative. And I just want to play, like, yeah, with the folk, you know, the folks that I 
that I connect with. It's just like, let's play and build something cool and bigger. Like, I mean, that's how Tori and I started doing it. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, mm-hmm. accountability partners into let's build this random thing. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we're doing it. And it's so much more fun. Than it's that been way. great. Yeah. I think that's so cool. It is. It makes it, it makes business worth it. I will say I'm not as great at networking as Ashlyn and probably you are Mary. And I think in my head, I still think of the bros whenever I go to like a networking event. I'm like, I just, I don't, I don't want to talk to you like right away. Like Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to talk to you about what you do. I don't, you know, I just kind of am turned off by that very quickly. And I think so many people, when you think of networking are kind of, in that same space. And so I do think there's an opportunity for um, someone to teach new ways of networking and, you know, making, building relationships instead of just what you, can you do for me? There's this incredible episode of that TV show that was on uh, Comedy Central called Corporate, where they talk about networking. And I laugh about it every single time I watch it. <laughs> of like, what? You don't have a spreadsheet of all your contacts you've ever made with uh, through networking <laughs> and like things you can use against them to like blackmail them? Like, that's what I think of when I think of like the old school so funny. Like, that's networking so funny. ways. Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I do think that. Okay, so so we're talking about taking the leap, right? Like I think if somebody is trying to take the leap or they took a leap, but they're like, I need to take another better leap. I do think it's about relationship building. And, you know, I think you do have to, at your core, be curious about people. Now, you don't have to be an extrovert. Like I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I'm not shy because there's a difference between being shy and being an introvert. But – um but like I like being around people for too long in too many ways exhausts me, which is probably also why I don't like being in an office. Mm-hmm. And um, like I preserve my peace in my home office. I'm so not lonely being home alone working in an office. So <laughs> I'm amongst friends. <laughs> and, and and I think I meet so many people when I do go out to events. You know, I've been investigating like the local chambers around here and some new groups and Um, there are just a lot of people who are, I don't know if they're burnt out on people or they're burnt out on the relationships in their own personal life and it's transferring over into their business world. I mean, this is where we get into like the therapy territory around business, but like it shows, you know, they're like anti people and it's like, bro, (laughs) you need to go take the to like a retreat spa <laughs> you need to just like <laughs> go away from people for a while and like reconnect with yourself and find what happiness is for you again because it is coming off you in ways and and in I think as somebody who does a lot of energetics work, you know, I walk into a room and I can find them really overwhelming and I'll be like really exhausted. But you know I meet people and some people like the they don't think they're being desperate, <laughs> but, but they're in front of you with this desperation, like, I got to make my quota or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, find some people to sell things to. And, and it's like, I will walk into a networking room and it's like, of course I have offers for sale. Of course there are things I want to do. Even if I'm launching, I always walk into the room, like, I'm just here to, see who I see (laughs) Mm -hmm. because we are not having that conversation in this room. If you are actually going to be like a coaching client, we're not going to talk about that in this room. Maybe you might ask me some questions or I might discover that you could be possibly a good fit, but like, we're not going to have that conversation here. It's, It's not the time. It's not the place, but like, I need to know, like, are are you living? Are you breathing? Do you have matter between your ears? Like, are, are what are we talking about here? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I don't know that our entrepreneur world fully gives credit to the fact that what we do is so very social and that um, developing social skills is a really big part of it. Doesn't mean you have to be a party animal, but it does mean that like, <laughs> You have to be able to connect with other people. And I think a lot of people do struggle in business because, you know, you can get away with not connecting with people for quite a while 
Like if you have enough dollars, you can buy paid traffic that will bring you plenty of customers and they'll buy your thing. But the longevity of that and the sustainability of that, it's like, you know, I don't know that that, that that works. Like, like the discovery meeting that I have um, this coming week, the person who brought me into that, um, I met her at the beginning of 2020, like right before COVID Mm -hmm. lockdown. And, mm-hmm. um, she kind of floated in and out of my world a bit. And it's like, where are we at? We're in like 2024. So four years later, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it's, it's has a very like promising situation that could show up here. And like, there's, when you tap into the energy of it, there's like a rootedness and depth and, um, there's just, there's, there's more there than, than just like, Oh, we need something. It's not transactional, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool that you say that because I think a lot of people don't realize that like people don't really buy off that first interaction, that it is you're just trying to get them to your next thing, inviting to them to the next thing. I keep telling that to clients of, you know, they'll be like, I have such a great thing. Why is nobody buying? And I'm like, what's your journey to get them there? Sometimes people are just not ready. People, you know, I know when we, when you and I first met, you were running incubator and I was like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I need that. But I'm so not ready because I was working full time. And I was like, I would love to work, you know, like focus full time on my business and be in this program. And it just, it, it didn't make sense, you know, for me at the time, but I know it was a really great, you know, a great thing that was running and, and doing that. And so, yeah, you have to be able to catch people at the different journey points and have, mm-hmm. you know, and be patient and really make it about serving them and, and that ideal, you know, person, as opposed to, yeah, like you said, the desperation, oh my God, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. And it's like, that yeah. just feels icky, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to do that. And you don't want that to happen to you either. So, yeah. 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 And I just think like if you are really building relationships, it's like a hashtag duh moment when you know what your market wants and what's happening in the world because you actually have people who are interacting with you regularly and you're like, well, Ashlyn and I had a conversation this morning and she told me the story about whatever. And then this afternoon I have coffee with Victoria and she tells me a story and I'm like, I think I'm seeing a pattern. (laughs) It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I need to, like, this is how I ended up retiring incubator. It's like, I just kept hearing more and more of the same refrain. And, um, and I was like, oh, I need to retire this. No, I'm going to, I'm going to stop fighting for this. I need to retire it. I need to go back to content production. I need to dial in systems specifically for helping people create their content for their marketing purposes. Like, you know, people hire marketing people like you and they have, they don't have content. <laughs> they don't have anything. And it's like, it's really hard to hire you if they can't, if they can't even co- like regularly produce things. And, um, you know, and I have the systems for that. And, and, and I was like, oh, it's like, it was so easily readily available and obvious. And I think when people get scared of pivoting, it's because they're not plugged in. They don't really have, you know, those business friendships. And um, yeah, and 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 that just takes time. It takes time. I think you need a lot more time than you realize. You know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You you perfectly laid up my next question <laughs> for the hot seat. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for doing that. Um, so of course, both Tori and I love your weekly emails. What tips do you have for keeping up consistency with your content creation? Oh, it's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like you have to find an angle that you love because there's always something that you do in life that you love. Um, like Ashley and I just happen to know, like you love your fur babies so much. And if Ari needs a walk, you gosh darn it all, you are taking your pup for a walk, you know? And like create, like if it's your email newsletter, it's gotta be on that level. It's the, I write this and publish it 
it's the same thing as like my, my dog, my dog child gets the care and feeding attention from me. And it's like, and so does my email newsletter. And I know that probably sounds like Mary, you're crazy, but, but that is how you make dedicated space for these things. And there's always going to be like a quantity factor that's going to vary between people and, you know, like I'm on a health journey right now. I used to be a total gym rat and I have not been a gym rat <laughs> for a very long time. So for me to be like, oh, I'm going to be in the gym pumping iron and doing my reps and, you know, running 5Ks at lunch, like every day, whoa, hell to the no, like I can't, I don't have it in me. It's not happening right now. Um but I think you also have to have to have the belief that you're capable of it. And it's like, if I can do that once per week, every week, I'm, I'm winning, you know? And I think with our business owners, like usually we'll say, you know, if you can do that newsletter, like once per month, and it's not an afterthought. It's like, I spent time on this. I made time for it and I'm publishing it on the first of every month. And, and it's like, okay, so 15 days out, <laughs> I'm already starting to like craft it and put it together. And so it's not just like five rando sentences in a paragraph and you're like, I sent it. It's like, no, people aren't going to engage with that. You know, like you're actually thinking about what your people want. Um, funnily, I think it also is coming back to our previous discussion about relationships and, you know, realizing that your content is a really big part of your relationships and yeah. it's how people get closer to you. Um, like you two are so sweet when you're like, I love your Sunday newsletter. <laughs> and I'm like, I love <laughs> that you love that Sunday newsletter. <laughs> but like, like look at the relationship that is formed through it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just think that um, to create the consistency You've got to, you've got to want to build the relationship. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. And um, that's a good point. Yeah. I have such a funny story to tell too. So I was like <laughs> zoning out listening to the readings and you said my name. Like, like I had just oh, I started to like, <laughs> like, like, like get distracted by something and you said my name in a video and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was really, it was really funny because I think it was like walking around this room or something and I was just, like, <laughs> I was laughing so hard because it just caught me and I was like, oh damn, Mary knows that I'm like not paying attention. And it was, yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> I felt like a little kid being like scolded. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you guys, so you guys are two really great examples. Um, you leave comments on videos and stuff like that. And and like, I'll respond to you, you know? So it's so actually this, so the date that we're recording this right now on Sunday, this weekend, I already recorded the readings. And on Sunday, nice. one of our newsletter members, she posted a question after the pillar readings. And so I made right. this coming weeks, like all about that. So it's right. kind of funny. We're talking about introversion because it has to do with introversion and making content. And, um, and, and, and like, and, and I was, and I'm, and I'm responding to her and it's at the benefit for the benefit of everyone else. And, you know, that is a relationship. It's totally a relationship. And I've seen some people give really great examples of developing relationships where it's not like you have to have a conversation with that person one on one every day. I think sometimes people think that that's what a relationship is. I, th I think that also just goes back to like codependent patterns that we see so much that gets cultivated through the coaching industry, which is like, if you don't talk to your coach, you can't make a decision. It's like, that's total bullshit. You know, and it's like, oh, no, I can't make a decision if I don't talk to my mastermind group. I, I have to wait, you know, and and it's like you become disempowered. And um, when I was in Boise this last summer at the ConvertKit conference, uh, Logan Yuri, who I believe is like the head of relationships or whatever at hinge the dating app she was one of the keynote speakers mm -hmm. and um she showed us some amazing ways of developing community through like a one-way email distribution so you're sending out emails but she was prompting them with questions and people were sending back in their feedback and then the following week it'd be like here's what you all said and 
they would they would send it back out and then people would respond to that and then they'd send it back out and people would respond to that and it's like so those people aren't they're on they aren't on a membership platform together they're not in a zoom room they're not on discord they're not even on like youtube they're in no place where they can actually see each other's comments and yet they feel completely connected like they have a community and that they're getting it delivered through email and i personally think email is incredibly powerful um I, I'm seeing so much evidence of our social platform starting to do the bait and switch again. Like there's this story this past week of um, this week or last week. I know it's within the last two weeks um, where Universal Media Group pulled their catalog from TikTok. And so it includes Taylor Swift's entire catalog. Mm -hmm. And um, there are creators who like you kind of need music for your TikToks and your reels. Like they yeah. have built those platforms to favor trending audio. So chances are you've also picked trending audio. And because they've pulled that entire catalog of music, and it's not just big artists like Taylor Swift, it's also some of the smaller indie artists. There are creators whose entire body of work has been rendered completely useless. Like their entire mm -hmm. library is useless. And, you know, if you are doing an influencer model or you're trying to build your audience and suddenly like your body of work is silent, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who do the, you know, B-roll with like the text and then it's trending audio. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty much the formula. And at least right now, but I think that's going to force it to change. So, you mm -hmm. know, right. so, so like, you know, you really, you really want to think about like, where do I insert my voice so that nobody can take my voice from me? Because this is an example of something where your voice is basically taken from you because you didn't actually use your voice, you use someone else's voice in order to help yeah. you sell your message. And, um, and, I, and I just see so much of that. I've had some Instagram reels where I've archived them because for whatever reason, the audio got taken down. And mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of reels where they were had a lot of traffic on Engagement. them. Engagement. And it traffic, wasn't just yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't just the view count because, you know, when you're in your insights, you can see what people are doing. And it was like people were going to the profile. They were clicking my links, which is exactly what you want. And all of a sudden the audio has mm -hmm. gone and I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't use that. Yeah. You know? yeah. And for me, it's not such a big deal. But if you have built your traffic off of social in that way, that becomes a really big deal. And if that's yeah. the only and if you don't, thing you have in your marketing, you don't have a website, you don't have email. I mean, that's why so much of the conversations I have with folks is like, screw social. We'll get to that. We need your website to work. We need your email platform yes. to work because you own those properties. You rent space on social media. <laughs> Pretty much. And also if we get people, if we drive people to you and you don't have anything together no. for them to go to, like, what's the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I love this term that's been used lately called proof of life. And it's like people will go to, say, your Instagram or your LinkedIn or whatever, and they want proof of life. They want to know that you're real. You're not a bot. They want to know that you are mm -hmm. kind of sort of current, like you're not like 10 years ago posting, you know. And mm -hmm. and then the, and the – but the other big proof of life is when they go to your website <laughs> – that you have one and it functions mm -hmm. and it's not like this domain is for sale. You know? <laughs> like, yep. I mean, it's, yep. it, it's real. And um, there's been so many trends that have come and gone over the years where it's like, you don't need a site. You do need a site. Um, I, I see so many people investing so much money in the nine grid thing on Instagram, which I think is fine if you're at the point where you've gotten all your other base systems in place. It's like, sure, play with the nine grid. But, you know, it's kind of like the equivalent of futzing with the colors and making a business card over and over again instead of actually yeah. figuring out what you saw. So, um, I, yeah, yeah, I, I so so the consistency portion, it it is so much a systematic thing. You know, there's an order of operations. It's like a mathematical equation. And I do love me some math. And <laughs> and and if you remember <laughs> If you remember your math from high school algebra, there is an order of operations and you can't do a step that's five in when you still haven't solved for the proper set of yeah. parentheses, you know, like you need to do that. Right. Otherwise the math will not math. And I think that's what entrepreneurs see when they're like, how come I think I'm like, and it's like, because they haven't heard from you <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're not trained and primed 
to expect an offer from you over email. So just because you sent your magical email and you're so proud of yourself, you finally did it. Like they, they don't, they don't want you selling your sham wow to their face. They didn't sign up for the infomercial to stay, you know, like they don't want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of opinions on that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's such a good point. If someone, you know, your business sensible woo, if someone was new to the world of woo and like I am, and they wanted to add a little bit of woo into their business, where would you recommend that they start? Oh, that's a good question. I think that people naturally gravitate towards something. And I think not judging yourself on what that thing might be is the first thing. So like astrology, well, so tropical astrology specifically, Western tropical astrology is very mainstream at this point and usually ends up in someone's feed. And they're like, they know there's usually know their sun sign. And they're like, I know that I'm a whatever sign. And if they are really into that, it's like, let yourself, you know, express that, you know, whether it's like saying, well, you know, of course I'm going to, you know, be a stickler about this thing and whatever it is I teach because I'm a Virgo, you know, <laughs> like, it, yeah. like it's fun. It makes it more fun. Um, there are certain modalities that I'm seeing people get really hot about lately um but they're much bigger so like human design would be one of them but you know if you have the capacity the time and the space and you're super interested in it it's like let yourself enjoy it and it's like what is it first of all what does it inform you about you before you try to make it part of say like your messaging or offers or something Mm -hmm. um i am seeing some people who um have like just learned about something like human design or they're just learning tarot and they're already putting out offers for it. And I'm like, (laughs) y'all take breath. (laughs) That's like, (laughs) that's like, you know, in business where it's like, I just learned how to post on Facebook. I'm going to throw out a course on how to post on Facebook, you know, and it's like, let yourself absorb it first. And like, how does it help you make better decisions first? How does it help you, um, show up more authentically. <laughs> um, you know, how does it help you do those things first? Cause I guarantee that is probably going to help you move the needle bigger on your business in the near term. And then in the long term, it'll start showing up in deeper ways. But I honestly, I think it's just going to keep getting more and more bigger and mainstream. Cause I think people are looking for more ways to learn about themselves and, um, like Myers Briggs is fine, Colby scores are fine, um, but like to know your enneagram and how to utilize it, or to know mm-hmm. you, and to actually know your astrology, like really know it, um, or to understand your human design chart and how you actually live it. You're not just like reading it and like, well, it says this, and it's like, but do you do you act like that? <laughs> and um, you know how true do those things feel for you? I think that's. <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah. That's, That's so funny point. that you mentioned Myers Briggs because Myers Briggs and Enneagram, they're like, it's astrology for, <laughs> for all of those yeah. things for business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've, every corporate situation I've been in, we've had to do some version of that. Yeah. yeah Myers Briggs. Sure. Disc, strength finder. Strength finder. <laughs> finder, <yeah. laughs> oh, <clears throat> okay. Well, oh, I know God. this because I know you have made changes in your business, but I would love if you would share with our audience, when did you know that you needed to pursue a pivot in your business? What are those aha signs when you were like, I'm switching, you know, you've told us your history of like going from blogging to, yeah. you know, the system stuff. How, how, yeah. when? <laughs> oh my, God. you know, I actually think that the first sign that we all get is like in your private, quiet space when nobody's watching you in your heart, you're just like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> you just know it. You're just like, I just don't like it anymore. Cause I think if you still like it, you're still gonna do it. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, 
like they always say like when the market's down on something it's up on something else but even when the market's down in one area there are still people offering that thing and they're mm -hmm. still surviving or doing the thing they're just not doing a lot of it and um because my personal prediction is that the high ticket mastermind programs are really going to just bottom out. I think it's a bubble that's about to burst. I think it's already bursting, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that it doesn't mean that they're just going to be extinct like the dinosaur. You'll still find them. They're just not mm -hmm. going to be as many and at least yeah. not for a while um because there's a serious quality problem going on <laughs> that's what i was gonna say because i feel like it's not a like they've not added anything new to it it's like hey we've run the no. same thing for t 10 years and it's just like you need to layer on yeah. additional needs to meet your audience needs right like yeah 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 and i think too like another sign is recognizing when the era is over like the era has passed so like those mastermind groups you know you hear these stories about like well in your it's usually like within the first two to three maybe four or five years it was real magic you know and and i i feel like that's always a sign of there was a certain class of entrepreneurs a graduating class that entered the market at the same time they solved a ton of problems they were real innovative they disrupted the market they did something cool that was new and then everybody standardized the crap out of it and oversold it and um and and i think one of the things that helps a lot for making the pivot is getting good at recognizing patterns I recognize patterns. I keep track of them, not just by like magical observation, like I'm actually keeping track of them. And I think this is where the system shows up. You know, this is where you maybe you have spreadsheets or databases, um, but it can also be something as simple like I, you know, will filter email and I subscribe to I don't well well this year I've actually cut back quite about quite a lot. I think I'm subscribed to if I'm lucky maybe it's 100 newsletters right now, but it's pretty typical that I'll subscribe between 100 and 200 newsletters and I don't read them all the time, but I do let the mail filter in and I look at how frequently somebody emails and I look at the language that's used and I'll just kind of like binge them when I need to look for an answer, kind of like going to an encyclopedia in the library. And I'll look to see like, because you can scan your email and look at the headlines that they're using, subject lines, you know, and it's like, do they resend? Because I'm not opening it regularly. So I'll be on a resend list. It's mm -hmm. like, are they resending? Like, how how much are they pinging me? What are they doing? Um, because of the work that I've done, I'm fortunate that I know what it's like to see somebody have a team of people help them produce launches and whatnot. So I can mm -hmm. I can spot the signs of well, there's no way a solopreneur is doing this on their own. Like, there's just no way. Um, but I think, too, like, as long as you're not a beginner and you're willing to really look at the picture of your favorite, you know, person that you look up to, like, you can also see where, you know, something is truly theirs or where they're relying on other people behind the scenes to help them make that happen. Um, some of them are very, are very crafty in the way they position themselves to look like it's just me i'm it's just me and you and it's like no way in hell lady <laughs> no way um yeah. but yeah like with the pivots i'll look for i'll look for those changes in the pattern in the market and um i feel like I mean, some of the writing on the wall can be really obvious. Like for me, I was watching my launch fail, you know, and I knew I knew I was on shaky ground because the leads going into launch were not great. And I thought, well, maybe I can squeak by. Maybe I can make this thing squeak by and, you know, we can actually um, make a final year happen. But I, I was pretty sure I was like, this is going to be the final year. I knew it. Mm -hmm. But then because I'm keeping track of what else is going on in the market and I'm going to conferences and I'm talking to people and I've got my relationships <laughs> who are telling me things and it's like, oh, there is a very clear pattern here. And I saw it happening real early. There was a shift and I saw some people who had really large programs and they were suddenly just quietly retiring them. And, um, and then I saw some other people who previously had been 
really heavy in the launching space, just kind of go dark. And Mm -hmm. I went, oh, I don't think I'm the only one. Because I think sometimes when you're not as big a business, you're like, oh, I'm small potatoes. Like, you know, what does it matter? And it's like, no, you're still in the same space as they are. And it's like, use that to your advantage because they by default are probably sharing more things than you do. And um, you can spot the what the market is trying to do, you know, sooner. You talk a lot about your body being one of your first systems. And you also recently chatted about like making sure that you understand your body, making sure that that system's in line and then making sure that you know what your body's trying to tell you and what your intuition is trying to tell you. And so my question for you is if you're someone like me who is maybe newer to listening to themselves and newer to listening to their intuition, um, who spent a lot of years ignoring um, stuff like that. Uh, what would you say to me or someone else uh, who is questioning if it's intuition or anxiety or OCD or ADHD? Like, what would you say? Like, how would you tell them to actually start listening to themselves? Oh my God. That's like a stop, drop, and roll moment. That's like <laughs> sometimes you're just not going to know right away, honestly. <laughs> Um, and, and also with that, like the more you do develop connect, like true connection to your intuition, like once you know, you've honestly connected with your intuition, it's like a bicycle. Like you can't unlearn how to ride it. You can't unsee it. So you, you know, when you're on or not, um, the thing that like, like the exploration in the spiritual practice is really, How do I run myself through um, consciously, like conscious choice tests for myself to figure out like the levels of me? So it's like, where and how does my ego show up? How does it feel as compared to genuine intuition as opposed to this is so my ADHD looking for a dopamine hit right now. And it's like, but that's the best thing ever. And you're just like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, like, you know, you, you and, and I think that you always know it's not your intuition. I think fi- figuring out when it's not your intuition is probably like the easier place to go to first. And um, because sometimes we can justify things like, you know, but spirit told me. Spirit told me I should do this, whatever, you know. And um, I think when something won't let you go, because you're not rushing into it, right? So there's like a period of time passing and it's like that piece of inspiration. It won't leave your space. It just continues to get more detailed. It just continues to talk to you patiently and gently that's probably a lot more intuition than say ADHD wanting some dopamine over here in this moment or, or like a flight or fight response because anxiety has kicked in or something. Those types of things typically tend to have this like sort of, oh, Mr. Giles is so meowing at us right now. I don't know if you can hear him. Saying, I, have I love the little say. meows, by the way. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's like I have things to say. Um, or he wants tuna. It's one or the other. Um, so so when, when you have this, like, it's do or die. I got to do it now. I usually find that's really not intuition. Like, you can get a really strong intuitive hit that's like, I really need to do this thing. I'm feeling the urgency. But like when you're not ignoring your intuition, you get these like gentle ticklings that are kind of like, it's kind of like, like we're talking about making these pivots, you know, it's like something is changing in the coaching industry. I can feel it. I can smell it in the air. It's like Mary Poppins. The wind is shifting. <laughs> Something's <laughs> changing. And like, let me pay attention. Let me, let me start paying more attention. Let me start paying more attention. And, um, But if it's like, if you don't do this in the next five minutes, you're not going to get the extra set of Jinsu knives. And you're like, no, no, that's not (laughs) not intuition. Um, I I do think that they say that entrepreneurship is the best self-development course you'll ever take. And and I I think like this is 
where we as entrepreneurs have a responsibility to do that self-development. Like we have to make the time and the space for it. And it doesn't have to be like big and overly involved. Like I've heard of some people where like they can't function if they don't have this like elaborate two hour routine in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's my face too. Who are these humans? That's my face too. Yeah, like they have to. Are they getting up at four a.m.? Like yeah, like they have to do like their meditation ritual on top of the manifestation ritual on top of the green smoothie and the thing and the whatever. And I'm like, that mm-hmm. is so much ego needing feeding. Um, mm-hmm. There might also be other, you know, personal, therapeutic, mental health things that also need to be addressed there, and. And it's like, okay, what is that telling me, you know, but to be like, I did my meditation and did my manifestation visualization and it told me I need to do this thing, you know, and it's like, did it, did it really like put yourself through your own series of tests, like test yourself, you know, um, I, I think that just so much of what we do, like your intuition is not going to clash with what your heart wants. So if you're like, resisting doing something but you're like but I, my, my intuition is saying that I need it but I don't want to and it's like that's not intuition then it's like what part of you are you talking to you know mm-hmm. and um learning that discernment is it just takes refinement but you have to but you also have to want to let it in you know mm-hmm. and I think sometimes you know people want to hear what they want to hear and we live and we learn You know, and sometimes, sometimes you're just totally wrong too. And that's how you learn. You know, (laughs) sometimes you're like, I was so convinced that I should, you know, do that, that conference, that event. And you like spend all the money and the time and you go and it's just like one disaster after another. And you're just like, and then you're in the middle of it and you're like, oh, (laughs) that wasn't intuition. (laughs) Yeah. Oops. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah that's, how you learn. that's such a good that's such a good uh answer and a reminder that i feel like i asked that question for a very personal reason i love that you <laughs> asked the question though because i think i think a lot of people have that question and they're mm-hmm. afraid to ask it and mm-hmm. um i i have also struggled to give answers for it so you're kind of inspiring me in this moment in a way actually just kind of cool because um, I've had people ask me over the years, they're like, how did you incorporate the intuitive stuff with the business stuff? And I haven't had a very clear answer. It's starting to get a little clearer because I've sort of been forcing myself lately to actually like break it down and articulate it. Um, but again, it's an example of like, well, time kind of has to pass. Like I kind of have to see how it's operating before I can explain it. Because mm-hmm. when you're in it, like, you know, when you're in it, in the middle of something, it's really hard to see the forest through the trees. And, mm-hmm. um, but I, I, because I'm seeing such a rise on people wanting to incorporate intuitive spiritual things with business, I'm like, I think, I think it's about time that I finally figure out how to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you had said something there about like that, like sense of urgency dynamic, you know, like Mm -hmm. you should be able to put things on a shelf and, and evaluate with yourself if this still is a thing like, you know, we had been talking, you know, a couple, how many months ago was that about the summit idea, which I still have, but it doesn't need to be a right now thing. You know, my intuition is that we will need this eventually. And because of what the market was doing in December and January, we have shelved it until it feels like the right time because, you know, nothing is more annoying than you put all this time and energy around something that wasn't a right time thing. And then you also end up beating yourself up about it because <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah. my gosh, you know, this didn't work. So I think there's that that if you can't if you have that urgency need to make the decision right now, that's usually not an intuition thing. That's a. I want something right, you know, an urgency want like to do it thing, not, you know, mm-hmm. it's a different part it. of your brain system. <laughs> like you said, the dumb totally, <laughs> it's, it's totally, you know, and I think sometimes we get inspired by other people, um, mm-hmm. like podcasts are picking up right now. And I see a lot of people like, oh, I got to like launch my podcast. And it's like, 
do you have a system to support you to do that? Cause this is a really big undertaking, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, like I know you behind the scenes, so I know how long you've been building up to this moment. And, but, um, <laughs> I, see, I meet so many people and they're like, I think I'm going to launch next week. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> and usually that's, that's like an egoic response. It's like, you want to hear yourself on a mic. It's like, how about if you guest on some other people's podcasts for like mm -hmm. three to six months while you also at the same time, build up your systems to get your own going. And, um, and, and that's not the glamorous answer, you know, it's just not. So that's usually a not really good, here. yeah, it's really usually a, a great indication that there's, some other some other driving force <laughs> well mary this is a big honking episode i feel like we covered just so much i think we, we lied to you we're like, we're like it's gonna be 20 minutes and it was not 20 minutes but you've shared so, JK. Much, great, <laughs> so much great content and information um okay. we wanted to just wrap up with is there anything you would like to plug and of course we will have all your links and things you shared with us in the show notes but um, this is your time to plug whatever it is you want to share. <laughs> well, we talked so much about the Sunday newsletters. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I send a weekly newsletter on Saturdays and that one is free and it includes the general reading, which is in there. So um, people who are still like starting out or whatnot, that's a great place to hop into. Um, and then if you want to go deeper, which you guys do, I have the extended readings that come out every Sunday. And the readings are specifically for business. So as a reader, like you can go on YouTube and there's a couple of readers I really love because they will actually give some great like business or professional career kind of angle on things, but they still incorporate relationships and love. And the, the joke amongst readers is, you know, it's always love or money, love or money. And, and it's true. I mean, those are the really big driving forces in life. But um, I found that when I created my space, I wanted to have a space that was really dedicated towards the entrepreneur experience because um, when you're trying to get some connection to your intuition and, you know, have somebody else's words help you connect with it so you can hear yourself better and whatnot, like, it's hard to do that when they then flip into, you know, <laughs> and does he love me? Does he love me not? <laughs> and you're just like, ah, oh, like stay on the other point. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we focus just on business and, um, I really love the space. I love that you all love the space too. And so that comes out, um, every week on Sundays, it's a monthly subscription. Um, this year in 2024, the rate is $19 per month. Um, I have a new sales page that is about to come out for it and calling it a latte level investment because I'm a coffee hound. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's totally a latte. <laughs> Still having wow. coffee over here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and if you put as many shots of espresso in your drink as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the yeah. Sunday newsletter is a really great way to have something on your time that is a ritual for you to work on your business instead of in your business on a weekly basis. And it's just like shows up and it's just there for you. Um, so I'm doing that this year. I've shifted away from doing incubator, which we talked about, which used to be very high touch in person met on zoom kind of environment. And now I'm doing asynchronous voice coaching. So boxer coaching. And I've got some people um, who have been long time, coaches of mine who are in that space now. And that has been a ton of fun. I'm finding it's really powerful. I think it's part of the season that we're in right now. Um, you don't need to show up on camera. You, nobody's looking at you. Um, nobody else is hearing you except me. And, and we're just talking through what you need to talk through. Um, I have some really nifty plugins that I use that help us manage the talk space so that, you know, we can summarize the messages so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Um, but people talk to me Monday through Friday. You can talk as much as you want. And um, I respond at least once a day. And every month we audit something. So we'll talk through like, what do we need to audit this month? And then I will look over, you know, whether it's, you know, content that they're creating or if they're working on like their mission. I got somebody right now who's trying to work on her mission statement. Like she's mm -hmm. been going through a really big change. It's very emotional for her. So, um, so like, that's a really great example of that too. And 
And it's a really easy container so that it's not this big, overly involved member space where you have to like show up <laughs> and in, you know, it's activated by you. So if you are going on vacation or you don't want to talk for a couple of days, it's all good, you know, but as mm -hmm. soon as you do talk, I will be there and I will respond to you. So, um, so that is happening. I have monthly packages and I also have quarterly packages and um, I have that information going up on my website as well. That's been a private VIP offer, but now that it's clearly working, um, that will be up mm -hmm. probably by the time this goes live. Um, so that'll be over on the website. And, and then I've got my podcast, which Ashlyn has been a guest on. <laughs> I just listened to that episode. Oh my goodness, so much fun. <laughs> it was such a good episode. <laughs> Yeah, so um, season one, so so we do the the movie and TV analogies. And season one, we all had a lot of homework, and we watched The Last of Us on HBO, and talked about hard things and how to finish hard things. And I'm so proud of that season. I love that season so much. Um, mm -hmm. And then in season two is going to come out this year. Um, I'm actually in the process right now of outlining scripting and figuring out like the format. I think the format's going to change just a little bit. So, um, so I'm working on that. Um, everybody knows Ted Lasso is very much a part of that. It might mm -hmm. include more than Ted Lasso. I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. But Ted Lasso <clears throat> for sure because it's yeah, time. It was awesome. It's time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So That's exciting. So all of that's over there. And then um, people who want my free library, um, I have also exited the online course space. So you don't need to log in for anything. You just go to YouTube and like everything's on YouTube now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So people can watch me over there. And, um, I, and, I, and I like to model the act of pumping out content and really making sure mm -hmm. people know that I am a true solopreneur. Sometimes I get some help behind the scenes. Um, you always know when I do because I always give those people credit. And um, for the most part, though, like I am a single producer and it's like it is possible to put out high craftsmanship quality content and do it regularly and not lose your mind over it and feel really creatively fulfilled. And that's really what I try to do with everything. So, um, yeah, systems all the way, yeah. yo. Yeah, I love it. And your content has been very inspired. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. yes. Well, I feel like I was going to say something, but that will plow us into a whole nother episode. So Mary, I hope you will <laughs> consider coming back again, because yes. I definitely want to plug so many more things that I learned from you and you inspire me so much. And I want to just say thank you so much for being on our podcast. And thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for thank having you for being me. here today. I'm so yeah. excited for you both. Congratu huge congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> we'll say bye to everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Take the Leap podcast. We hope you found useful takeaways you can apply to your entrepreneurial journey. Subscribe so you don't miss future episodes and keep in touch and follow us on Instagram. If you have business questions, shoot us a direct message or leave us a comment. We'll try to cover it in an upcoming episode and visit our website, Take the Leap dash today.com for more resources like our online course that accompanies this podcast.